I'm talking about any narrative. Uh, when it when a major event happens, you'll quickly notice that there's a very similar emotional tone and a very similar narrative that is dispensed from the mainstream media, whether it's from the, the BBC or the New York Times. And I'm just wondering, you know, why is there usually one dominant narrative for almost every major event? Because the CIA want, knows what it wants us to believe globally. So, so that's why it, it has this dominant narrative. The BBC CEO used to be called the content controller and, and that that was so obvious what what they were doing all along so so this content controller um, manages our expectations and manipulates our, our moods by um you know quietening us down you know, especially during cri christmas where everything is supposed to be quiet and nice and um creating narratives of um, political parties um, we're, we're having a, a general election on the 4th of July, and basically it, it, the narrative is that um, the Tories are now unelectable. It's got to be Labour expectations. And is the public just passive recipients of elite narratives, or d does the public get to play a role in which narratives become dominant? They can choose to believe it or not believe it. Um, and I think this dominant narrative is meant to meant for the eyes and ears of the average female voter who um, won't be interested in geopolitics won't probably doesn't understand her own history very well and certainly isn't interested in the histories of other countries the american empire invades noticed about ukraine Zelensky was chosen specially for his ability to appeal to a certain demographic um, women of a certain age who'll think, you know, he looks, he's got a full head of hair, he's, um, he was a comedian, he's got a nice looking wife. And uh, which, which narratives give you the, the biggest dopamine rush? Which narratives make you feel the greatest? Um, I want everything to um, end happily and for, for good to triumph over evil. Um, Yuval, Yuval Harari's book, sapiens I, I find him uh, tiresome and he, he just seems to relay the the conventional wisdom as though it's some great big insight so i i i just find myself tuning out whenever i listen to him speak and, and i haven't read any reviews praising the book from people i respect so um yeah, that people believe what they want to believe and basically um, human history has been people making up stories about themselves and their group and living their lives to make it come true the fake it till you make it strategy for their for people's preferred narrative what do you think about that luke yeah i, I think people choose the, the the narrative that makes them feel the best it gives them the biggest dopamine rush, reduces the pain. Yes, and and, and today um, I, I, I hosted a space um, whose original title was Do Beliefs, Stupid Beliefs Make Clever People Stupid? Mm. I, I was wondering if you had an answer to that question, Luke. Do stupid beliefs make clever people stupid? And we're all stupid in various areas. Nobody's going to be astute in all areas of life. And as we are going to be primarily attracted to those narratives that give us the biggest dopamine rush. Uh, many of them are going to be completely disconnected from reality. But if you embrace a narrative that's completely disconnected from reality and is rationally stupid, that doesn't mean it's a bad narrative for you because many of our narratives have to do with things that have no direct impact on our life. So let's say you embrace a narrative about the causes of World War I that is completely disconnected from reality, that's not going to have any effect on your life. Let's say you embrace a narrative about UFOs that is disconnected from reality, that's not going to have any effect on your life. If you change, exchange one type of Christian theology for another type of Christian theology, uh, it's not, uh, not likely to make a dramatic difference in the quality of, of your life unless it, it changes the people that you hang out with, and then it's their, their social influence that will change your life so, so most narratives most beliefs don't have any direct impact on someone's life what about religious beliefs belief in the abrahamic god because well they're supposed to be you know all those people who who claim 
to be Jews, Christians, and Muslims. So they're supposed to believe in God, but but it, it's and and you've pointed it out before that that it, it doesn't. Even Jews, Christians, and Muslims do not behave in a way that is recognizably different to to atheists. Yeah. So the, the belief in and of itself doesn't make uh, much of a difference in the, the lives of people who say yes to the belief, except it does make them a little more predisposed to a uh, more intense in-group identity. So what will make a difference is if that belief then leads to concrete human connections, and then those will form you, those will affect you. So if you believe in God in a Christian sense, and then this leads you to greater connection with, with Christians, then those social relationships will have some effect on you. Yes, I mean, I, I think that many people, the overwhelming majority of people who claim to be Jews, Christians and Muslims are, are in, a, in fact atheists. And what you said about, you know, you, you, you like Christian culture, you like Christian people. So you you join the Christian gang um, or you join the Muslim gang or, the you know, or, or um, you, you convert to Judaism. And it is really about um, which so 